Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part 31 of Ultron the Real Robot. And this time we're going to be messing around with a motion capture suit that I made some time ago and trying to drive the robot from it. <laughs> Last time we sorted out Ultron's hands, forearms and elbows so that it can move those around and I can command them from the brain and we worked in some simple reactions there for touching Ultron and all those uh, emotional responses that we put in the brain before so have a look at the last few episodes to see that. This time we're going to try and drive a puppeteering mode and also see how else we can integrate motion capture sensors so let's have a closer look and see what we've got. So on our motion capture suit we've got down here an Arduino with a Bluetooth shield, some power regulation and a battery so if I just plug that in it should power up. There we go, there's our Bluetooth shield waiting to pair. And we've also got an I squared C multiplexer that allows us to address multiple I squared C devices and I've got six connectors here and these go off to sensors all around the body and these are Adafruit BNO055 inertial measurement units and we've got one on the body here and several others. As well as one on the body we have two on the left arm there is one on each leg, and we also have one here on the headset. The original aim of this was that basically I could puppeteer one arm and the robot would follow my arm. The other arm we don't have any sensors though, so the aim was that was going to work out what to do by the rest of my body language, by the position of my other limbs. So essentially if my legs are straight in the middle, it would be an absolute mirror. If I have my uh, left leg following my uh, left arm and my right arm or right leg back, then it would do the opposite. So if, for instance I was going to reach for something then the other arm would go back and if I have my legs the other way round it would be almost a mirror but they would move in this direction as if I was reaching for something in the other direction perhaps and then we would have fine tuning on the unpuppeted arm with the head tracking so that actually almost like a controller prosthetic arm uh, interpreting the rest of my body language. So we're going to start with um, something a bit simpler than that. We're going to take a couple of the sensors and just try and drive one arm and work our way up from that. So the motion capture suit is another Bluetooth device. Here's the other shield that it was set up to pair with. That's before I started using those bare HCO5 devices. So this is the same thing on a shield. So we need somewhere to take that data and plug it into our Arduino that does reaction and reflex. Um, and that's the... Uh, the front one here, the back one does the emotion control, so uh, when it's in puppeteering mode it's probably not going to pay much attention to its own emotions. So I'm going to disconnect the serial lines from the other Arduino, have a little switch that connects them to this shield instead. Um, I've already used the other serial interfaces, one is for the speech module which is just at the back there, one of them sends and receives to the robot and that's the three other than the ones that are tacked on the programming in Diag's port which I really need to see what's going on. So I'm going to add a switch, the switch is that over, it'll probably take another pin high or low, one of the digital IOs so I can put the brain into a different mode when the motion capture is attached. I've just installed a couple of switches there, we've got a toggle switch which takes a pin low so it knows not to listen to emotions anymore and that it's in manual mode for puppeteering and then we've got this other switch that breaks out the two serial lines and gives me another one to go off to my receiving Bluetooth module. I will eventually not use those shields and I'll be using the smaller HCO5 modules which will be built into the brain but for now I'm just going to bodge it all on the outside. So we're now going to get some data off the motion capture suit. So I've got my uh, receiving Bluetooth shield here plugged into another Arduino for now, but I'm just using that to provide um, power and get the data off the shield. In fact, the Arduino has the reset pins bridged out, so it's not even booting. And I've just cabled the uh, serial line there straight into the um, serial line of the USB to serial adapter. So that is basically when I open a serial port to this, just shoving the data straight to my terminal so I can see what comes out of here. And we don't need all the axis because some of them we don't need all three axis of uh, movement, so let's have a quick look at the code and see what we get. So I did actually play around with this in some previous episodes, but essentially uh, we're using the Adafruit BNO and sensor library here, and what we can do with this uh, I2C multiplexer is to uh, basically switch between its outputs by doing TCA select and a number, and then we can initialize each sensor, and there was some trouble I had with having to initialize them twice to get them to work, and this is all in very one of the very early episodes where I played around with the motion capture suit and built a test arm. So. Um, Let's have a look. So uh, basically I'm running this um, uh, with multitasking, so it's running um, at roughly half the speed of the receiving Arduino, so it doesn't overflow the buffer. So it's running every 80 milliseconds. And um, essentially what I'm doing here is pulling in these um, 
axis, so the event orientation X, Y, Z are the axis from the different sensors. Now I don't need all of them, so for instance the body I only really need rotation, uh, vertical rotation, because I'm uh, going to be using that to subtract from the other axis, so if I turn in space it doesn't think my arm is moving. Um, the head I've got two axis and each arm I've got three axis. So all I'm really doing here is um, reading those and chucking them straight out to the serial port. And uh, if we have a look here we can see the data coming along. So um, if I give the uh, mannequin a shove there we should see all the data changes as all those sensors get triggered. So uh, that seems to be working pretty well. I just need to sort out uh, getting those to the right scale, getting them into the brain, and hopefully then with the motion smoothing, we should be able to put those out to the robot and it should work pretty well. So you'll notice there's no decimal places on here. I'm using integers because it makes the data smaller. Although as I say, we do have that motion smoothing, so I don't think it's gonna make any difference. And this is the way I did the previous test. One small issue I have with these inertial measurement units is uh, basically they measure three axes. So they measure this way and they measure this way and they also measure rotation. The problem with the rotation is they power up on the uh, point of zero wrapping round to 360. So it'll power up with a value of zero. If I turn it one way it will count one, two, three, four degrees. And if I power the other way it will suddenly go 360, 359, 358. Uh, with the 180 point being all the way around the other side. So I need a little bit of code that turns that round and puts my uh, zero point here. So we start at zero and if I turn it this way, we go negative, minus one, minus two degrees. And if we turn it that way, we go positive. Then we'll need to scale that to match the actual axis of the robot. Right, so I've just coded up that receiving Arduino to read all those values over serial. So it's doing a load of pars ints to get the variables I want, and that's on the serial 3 interface, which is the eventual uh, interface in the brain that it's going to use. And I'll be moving all this code over shortly. For now, we're just doing a test. So we've got a little bit of code here that turns that first head x axis round. So it basically says if, it's, if the value is currently between 0 and 180, then go and turn that to be between 90 and 0. And if it's between 180 and 360, uh, then go and map it um, from 0 to minus 90. So that gives me a swing around 0 instead of around 360. Now I've got a variable here which is counting up every time to show me the code is still running. And I'm outputting that to the serial port. Um, along with the other data and at the moment of course um, I've put these second variables for each one and that's what I'm getting out of this um, bit of code here. So for now we're only displaying that rotation variable and that's the first one in this column. This is the count going on and this is the rotation. So if I now go and rotate the head we should find we get uh, positive numbers in one direction up to seven degrees and the other way it goes negative instead of swinging about 360. So that seems to work pretty well to track that motion. So we need to do that with all the x-axis that I'm using there and scale them all out to match the 10-bit integer for the rest of the robot. The next thing to try and compensate for is making sure that when I just move around in space it doesn't think all my arms and legs are moving. And I can do that by using the body IMU to compensate because I can work out if I'm moving from that and take that off the others. So uh, basically what I've done here is the same little switch with the body axis to turn that round. And then simply for the head, I've said it's the head minus the body. So uh, now the effect we get of that is uh, the first column here is uh, the head, of course. The third one is in fact the body. So um, let's just go and rotate the head first of all. We should find that first column, we get some sensible numbers going positive and negative. But now if I rotate the body and the head together, we should see that third column counting up, but the first one should stay pretty much still where it's taking one off the other. So if I rotate the body a bit and leave it there and then rotate the head, that should give me the correct answer. So that keeps everything relative to uh, the body position so that I don't end up, when I turn around to say hello to someone, having the uh, all the arms and legs move on Ultron. So I've just hacked in that Bluetooth shield, the Arduino is just providing power and I'm just taking the serial lines and ground off to that switch and back into the brain there. So eventually, as I say, I'll build a smaller module into the brain and we'll make sure it's set up only to pair with the motion capture suit so it doesn't pair with the other Bluetooth interface and make a nasty mess. So I've now coded up uh, one of my sensors on the head here to uh, basically map those to Ultron's um, axis there so you can see I've got this kind of crude if I turn the head this way we just scaled it to turn the head roughly the same amount and if I do this then uh, it turns the other way but you can see the axis are kind of confused so I mean it pretty much works 
But as I'm moving backwards and forwards, you'll notice it's moving left and right slightly, even though I'm not on here. You can see it quite a lot there, in fact. Um, and the other way round as well. So you can see he's nodding there, even though my, my tracker isn't. So um, I think I know why this is, but to find out why that is, we need to go back to the original R&D I did on these sensors and my little test robot arm. So I'm going to do a bit of a brief explanation, but you actually need to look back on part three, which was about 20 minutes, and I used these sensors to control a little robot arm that I built. And uh, the interesting thing about these sensors is they use Euler angles, spelt Euler, um, and they're not quite the same as uh, traditional IMUs, where as you move them, you'd expect the axis to stay with the IMU. In fact, with Euler angles, some of the axis stay in space, particularly the x-axis, which is the vertical rotation. And I've labeled my axis here with an x, and uh, that one is the one that moves the arm this way. Um, the others sort of stay um, with this sensor. Um, so that will be my uh, Z axis and that's my Y axis. And the two I'm using on the head tracking there are the rotation one way and I'm using the Y axis as well. So um, basically what I've done is put my sensor on its side. So it's trying to keep the X axis in space. But as far as I can tell, it's actually this way. So um, as it's moving that Z axis, it's actually moving a bit of Y as well, and that's causing the head to tip the other way. So I think what I need to do is put my sensor back up the other way so it's flat when it powers up, and then all my axis should be the right way around. So now all I've done is put my sensor so it's flat on the top of the head instead of that way, and now everything works perfectly well. So uh, there we go, up and down without any confusion. And whatever I do now, it moves the axis perfectly. So yeah, that seems to work pretty well. You'll notice there appears to be a slight delay in the motion there, and that's the motion smoothing that I built into Ultron's head, and I've built into all of the joints. So it's not tracking precisely. If I move quickly, it takes a while to catch up. But if you remember, I am taking uh, an integer out of here. I've thrown away all the decimal points on all of the motion, but I've got quite a satisfying motion as a result of that smoothing. So. Um, Hopefully that's going to work pretty well for the other joints as well. This does of course mean I need to rebuild all these mountings, so all of those IMUs are sideways, so uh, whether I can cut a hole in these pouches, these are mobile phone holders for jogging, or whether I should build something completely, but we need definitely a bracket that uh, holds that IMU so it powers up flat basically. So I've just modified the CAD for those mounts so that uh, basically we can swivel all the IMUs around and I've done them in different orientations so they suit wherever it's mounted. Obviously the one on the front of the body needs to be in a different orientation to the ones on the sides. So we'll get those printed and get everything remounted. Here they come. So those are all fitted and now all my IMUs are flat and they all face in the same direction. So now we can retest and we can just move Ultron's head by moving the headset a little bit there. That should work all right, let's put that back on straight. But if I turn the whole mannequin, then of course it uses the body IMU, subtracting it, so we should find that the head stays still on Ultron, or thereabouts, unless I move the mannequin this way, of course. But rotating it, it takes away the body, so everything stays in the middle and it only moves when the headset moves against the body sensor. Right, after some messing around, which we'll go into later, I've now mapped the IMU on this arm to the upper shoulder here, and I built this robot to match the Euler angles, so it's built exactly like my test arm. So now if I move this uh, sensor in the Z-axis, we should see Ultron's left arm moving there, as it does with the head and all the other things that still work. And of course, if I pick up the whole mannequin and turn it, we should see that arm should stay relatively still. And it's only when the sensors move against the body sensor, of course, that it does anything. So if I wiggle the body sensor, then it moves both the head and the arm because it thinks both of those are turning in relation to the body. So I just wanted to get both arms moving. So I've basically set up the other arm to mirror in the opposite direction, as I described at the beginning of the video, as if my left leg is leading. So when one arm comes forward, the other one goes back. So now if I move this sensor again, we should find his body twists, just like that, which works pretty well. And obviously it's not actually reading the leg sensors at the moment, it's just set to mirror, but eventually they will either mirror both forwards, both backwards or whatever, and the leg sensors will just be used as a switch, so that should be relatively easy to achieve. Of course, again, if I wiggle the body sensor, we get all of those axes moving, 
because it's using that subtraction again, so we get the head and both arms. So pretty happy with where that is right now. And when I said I spent some time messing around to get this working, what I had to do in the end, as well as orienting all the IMU so they're flat, is make sure they're actually the right way round in the x-axis so that, that uh, the wires are on this side and do that to all of them and that's the same as it is on the body and the other IMUs because even then even when they powered up on the 0 360 point something else very strange happened uh, with my code that turned that round to a plus minus swing so now I've just swiveled them all round and everything seems to be working. Right I've now coded in one more axis which is the axis it's the z-axis to lift the arm out so uh, if I move this up now, we should find the arm moves up. I've made the uh, arm less sensitive than my motion, but it does in fact work. There's no motion smoothing. And also I 3D printed the wiper for the stick on slide pot on these actuators. So that's, that's a bit loose at the top. So the feedback isn't quite what it should be. That needs looking at. I might need to design the shoulder bell or redesign the shoulder bell here because that gets stuck on its runner as well where that's running on top. So that's not the best design. Let's pop that back in. So sometimes that gets stuck and that's going to need to be looked at. But um, essentially with the motion smoothing and everything else, that seems to be working pretty well. So we've now got one more axis to do, which is the rotation on the top part of the arm. And that's quite interesting to see the effect of having all three axes working together. All right, so I've now mapped the remaining axis of the IMU to the rotational or uh, the rotational axis on the top of the arm there. So obviously we've got um, bowers and forwards and we already have rotation at the shoulder. So this axis, of course, is now this, which is a bit counterintuitive, really. It doesn't really make sense that when we move the IMU in that direction that the arm should rotate. Um, but of course, it starts to make sense if you think about naturally moving your arm backwards and forwards. So uh, that would mean I would rotate it back slightly and I'd lift it out and um, you can see that the robot there as I'm moving the IMU around is trying its best to stay parallel on that plane going backwards and forwards there as I'm doing that. So let's just move that back. Probably needs the proportions tuning a bit but as I'm doing it it's trying its best to put the keep the arm straight there and uh, rotate the thing around and keep that uh, arm parallel. And of course, if we lift the arm out slightly there, let's just lift that up. We can see we still get the arm rotation now. Whoops. Shoulders popped out again. We still get that arm rotation, as you'd expect, uh, by rotating the arm in the motion capture suit. So, um, yeah, definitely needs motion smoothing and a few other bits and pieces doing to it. But on the whole, that's the way it was designed. So pretty happy with that. It's the first time I've had all of these sensors running, operating the robot at once. But that seems to be working pretty much as you'd expect a human arm to, even though it's limited and it doesn't actually have a pivot to bring it straight out forwards. Right, I've now put motion smoothing on that arm, so uh, that's quite a lot nicer to play with now. Yeah, it could be a bit more than that, but uh, essentially, hopefully, you can see the effect there of me moving that around. A bit trying to keep parallel, which is what I was showing before with the jitter. So there we go. Pretty much okay with that. And obviously, bringing that arm out still gives me that rotation. So the robot is a bit wobbly, and there's some things to be addressed there. There was going to be an IMU actually in the robot that it can use almost for stability, but also it has ab actuators that I haven't even looked at, which will probably translate back to the uh, the body sensor in the motion capture suit. So that's another whole thing. But I'm pretty happy that these sensors work for now, and I've got multiple sensors driving the robot. Right, I'm actually going to leave this episode here because it's been quite involved getting all those sensors mapped all in the right orientation, getting all the code work right to turn them all round. And I'm quite happy I've got that many sensors working to control the robot. Obviously, it is a bit shaky, but next time we can do another episode polishing all those problems off. I've obviously still got the forearms to get in there and the leg sensors, but I'm not going to do that until I can wear the suit. And at the moment, it's a bit awkward. This body thing falls down because my skin is not as textured as this mannequin. The thighs fall off and things. So next time I need to come back and basically make a proper strapping system to hold this. I also need some more features, like some status LEDs that tell me when each IMU initializes 
I probably need a reset button because there is some creep, particularly in that rotary x-axis because it uses uh, magnetic fields to position itself. So sometimes the uh, zero point sort of creep slightly so I could really do the big button that resets everything to zero where I can stand straight and press the button. It puts the robot straight. So there's a few things like that are going to make uh, the development a lot easier. And then hopefully we can do what I said at the start of this video with the uh, robot interpreting the motion capture motions to make that other arm move as if it were a prosthetic arm. So that would be the ultimate aim of this. So don't forget to subscribe for more updates on this project and all the other projects. And also check out my Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash xrobots. Basically, most of these projects are supported by patrons and you can get access to some exclusive rewards, including a live broadcast with me and all my videos early. Also check out my Spreadshirt store for exclusive limited edition t-shirt design, which is due only for another two months and that will end at the end of March. So don't forget to check that out. All right, that's all for now.